Hello, this is Kevin Alexander. The intention of this video is to briefly discuss CAD file naming and item numbering. Those are two different things in UpChain. However, we can potentially, if, if desired, synchronize those two things together. And so we'll, we'll demonstrate that here in a moment. First off, if you're a tenant administrator, there is a property that allows you to control what happens to the CAD file name at the instant that get, it gets associated to an item. And again, we'll, we'll demonstrate this here in a moment. Just as a reminder, your item numbering rules are always what controls how items get numbered in UpChain. Currently there, currently, there is no way for the CAD file name to drive the item number, okay? But we can do it potentially the other way around, okay? So we can potentially have the item number drive the CAD file name, and this property here is, is what achieves that or allows us to achieve that. Now, uh, here you can see there's a help article, which is linked, and if we go to that help article, there's some good information here on some of the options that we can use uh, inside of this, this file name pattern option. Now, the default behavior is to keep the original file name of the CAD file. Okay, So in other words, as I check in the CAD file, UpChain's going to leave that file name in place. So let's go take a look at that behavior. Okay, so here we are in SolidWorks. I've created just a dummy part called original file name demo.sldprt. And it's not registered, obviously. So let's right click on this. Let's create the item that I want to associate with uh, this CAD file. Now I have a, a property set that enforces uh, uh, the user to type in a change description, that's not required, but I like the uh, property. There's a tenant property that uh, controls that, so check that out if you like that behavior. But let's go ahead and check this in. And watch what happens over here on the right-hand side in the C bomb. So the new item that just got created has the 4900 part number. However, if we look at the actual CAD file, it still has the name that we initially started with, original file name demo.sldprt. However, the corresponding item number is 004900. Okay. So up. So, in other words, UpChain left the CAD file name intact but created a new item number and those item that item and that CAD file certainly are associated together. Now let's change this property and see what impact that has on our CAD file naming behavior. So we're going to change this to item number. Let's save that. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when we change that, that property. So here again in SOLIDWORKS, I've created a new dummy file called item number demo .sldprt. Let's create the item. Again, you don't have to require change description if you don't want to. Okay, so notice what happens over here on the right-hand side. Something interesting has occurred. So the item number is 00, specifically M-004901. And if we look down here at the file name, UpChain has actually renamed the CAD file to match the item number. So those two things are synchronized. So that property change is really useful when we're talking about making our CAD file names match or be synchronized with our item numbers. That's how you achieve that is, is with that property. So in the CAD system, I can create widget.sldprt. And then when I'm ready to give it a part number, I simply create the item, 
and upchain will do the rest. Upchain will create the new item with our appropriate numbering schema that we've put in place, and upchain will rename the CAD file to match that, that item number. Now, that's all well and good for brand new objects that are, are newly created in upchain. But how do we handle existing objects? For example, you're a new customer to UpChain, and you've got hundreds, perhaps thousands, of pre-existing CAD files out on a hard drive, on a shared drive, in a database, and you need to migrate those into UpChain. How do you ensure that you're going to get new item numbers that match the CAD file names? The solution here is that we create the item first. So rather than create the item from CAD, we create the item in the web app. So let's go do that. So right now, I've got a CAD file that's 987654321 is the CAD file name. We'll assume that is a real part number. That's a legacy part number that we need to migrate into upchain. Now, if I just right click on this and create the item, well, if I use original file name, then upchain will keep that, but upchain is going to create a new item using whatever numbering scheme we've got in place. So that's not going to work. If I have that property set to item number, upchain is going to rename that CAD file. So I'm going to lose that part number that you see there. So again, the solution here is to come into the web app and either create a new end item or alternatively, if you're looking at a bill of materials, you can actually insert this part into the bomb as well, but we're going to create this as a new end item. And of course, depending upon your environment, your types will look different than this screen here, but we're going to choose uh doesn't really matter let's choose um cots electrical hardware just as an example and for the number i'm going to type in the number and again we're going to assume this conforms to our current numbering schemes and so on and so forth so i'm overriding the auto numbering within upchain and i'm just going to call this new part new part create Okay, and if you look over here on the left-hand side, here is the new item that we created. So in CAD, what we're going to do when we right-click on the CAD file, we're not going to check it in. We're not going to create an item. We're going to find an item. Okay, so we're going to go find that item that we just created. 9876543321. Search. I'm going to select that part right there and watch what happens over here uh, well let's go ahead and check this in sorry one second okay and notice what happens over here on the right hand side upchain associates the CAD file and the item right but again we had to create the item first so that upchain did not auto number the item so that's the solution when we're trying to migrate existing part numbers into UpChain, where we want to keep the CAD file name and we want an item number that corresponds exactly to the CAD file name. Thank you.